Hello again. Welcome back to European Autocraft Studios. Another great Saturday. Uh, we're trying to wrap up this car uh, as far as removing all the little bits that we've left. Uh, sort of bring it to its knees all the way. Um, we've got uh, charcoal canisters got to come out, hood release cable, the miscellaneous things, rubber buffers, uh, little strips here and there. We're going to start at the front and move our way back with the door harnesses out. Uh, we have a little expansion tank in the back for the fuel tank's got to come out. Uh, accelerator pedal. All kinds of stuff we'll find along the way. Hopefully I brought enough tools over here to do this. Um, we're going to start by taking the uh, hood release cable out, which has to be replaced anyways. Uh, it's just a little 7 millimeter set screw that locks the cable in place, and then we're going to drill out the rivets for the, uh, for the uh, latch. So let's get started. Should just loosen that up, and we've got a 10 millimeter. And just a little clip holding it in. And no bolt, it's actually a stud. So that makes it easy. Less lost hardware. Okay, so that's that. Cable comes out. It's nicely routed down through the suspension tower here. Uh, we have another little bracket there. Let's see if I can loosen that. All my years on uh, with Porsche, I've never had to replace one of these cables, which is odd. But even though they look kind of a mess, it still works pretty well. Look at that. Even the grommet's still pretty soft. A good sign. All right, so that is that hood release cable, and now we'll drill the latch out. And what happened last time? I tried to drill something out. Well, try to do a better job. These are already already have a nice hole in the middle. We should be okay. Let's see. On live television. Sideways force never hurts. Want my? You definitely don't want the drill to spin while you're trying to take these off. Yeah, we'll deal with those later. Stuck on there, and that's it for the hood release cable. Um, some of these are designed. I don't think this one. No, not this one. If the hood, I think it's the 911s, if, or the later 911s, if the hood release cable breaks, the lever moves in the opposite direction and releases the hood. Um, so the cable has to be held right in the middle for it to be lack, lock, uh, locked, latched. Uh, so if the cable breaks, it goes the other way and releases the hood, or you pull it and it releases the hood. Pretty nice if the cable breaks, because it's very difficult to get into. This one maybe not so much, we can come up from the bottom, but some cars, if these are captured underneath, you can't get to them. So that's a nice feature. There, okay. We've got these little captured nuts. Pretty simple. Just gotta push one leg out and they come out. These, on the other hand, are a little bit more tricky. If you ever try to get these off, this one you probably you won't be able to see it, but when you the hole is punched, it leaves a ring. So once you snap them on, that little ring snaps down into the hole and they don't want to come off. So they have to be lifted. Luckily, I have some fingernails here. If you can lift it, well, you can actually see the ring a little bit sticking down into the hole. 
you want to get that yeah, such precision look at this I can loosen it up a little bit first then I can get underneath and pull it off we'll probably replace these but some nice nice new hardware well there you can see it I'll put it down there you can see the little ring or not a little clip inside hard to see on on camera but when you take your car apart you can take a look so it's easy to get underneath and take some pressure off so that works too okay we can do it that way I just hate to distort them if we're going to reuse them where do we go next uh, let's see we have our ground wire the longitudinal ground wire bolt take that one off here uh, there's some other captured nuts down inside the uh, longitudinal member here which we're not going to take out um, couldn't if we wanted to I don't think uh, we have the radiator upper mounts which I think are bent just a little bit These push down on the little rubber blocks that hold the radiator in place. But this one, I think is bent. Oh no, it's this that's bent. Okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the sheet metal that's bent here. So, we'll have to do some test fitting at the body shop to make sure we get it nice and straight again. Broken clips, wire harness holders here Came on the inside. Oh, that was from the, uh, I think the air guide. That looks pretty good. Now, uh, our brake line. This is the one we already disconnected it. We just have to pull the... the grommet and take that right out. Simple. Okay, another connector zip tie here. here. Okay, charcoal canister line. This takes fuel vapor. Remember last week we disconnected this from under the car. This is a vapor line. Um, for the evaporative emissions, so we don't have any evaporative emissions. It goes right down through this line into the charcoal canister and it gets reburned into the engine using these series of valves that's here. Um, I'd have to look it up exactly how it works. It's pretty basic, uh, simple type, uh, simple system, not like today's more complicated systems. Uh, so we'll get this hose off and take the canister out of the inner fender well. Uh, Maybe. Don't know if this hose will come off. Now we know. Okay. Now, I have another little clip here. We got two little Phillips screws here. I wanted to save these little hardware bits for last because we're going to have a container just for the final under the hood disassembly. That way it doesn't get mixed up with all the other bigger stuff that we did. Uh, a little bit better organization, I think. Believe me, I need all the help I can get. Whew. Okay, in the fender well, we have the wheels turned. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there. We've got one, one little bolt down here, and then there's one on top. Um, I should be able to get it with uh, my little baby broken neck. Let's see how that goes. I'm doing this by braille because I can't see in there either. I know I got something. 
There it is. This is where fresh air is allowed in to uh, dry out the uh, carbon. So when the engine des decides it needs a little bit more enrichment, it takes it from the charcoal canister first. So when it does open the valve, air can come in here, go through the charcoal, and take the vapor out. When the engine starts to see that it's leaning out, it turns this off, and then the computer will increase the signal in the injectors to give it that little bit of fuel it needs once this has been depleted. You can hear the carbon inside. Good stuff. Good stuff, that carbon. Good job. Okay, we got a strip here. This was for the windshield washer hose, I think. Um, no, that was on that side. Not important at the moment. That was a long time ago. Um, what's that? We got these little clips inside that hold the um, little thumb screws that hold the fuse relay panel down. All right, another line clamp. Just these little. Plastic line clamps, more speed clips. Uh, this was for the blower motor and goo. Lots of goo. Oh, here's a perfect example. Here's a little more exaggerated look at this. How these are captured. I always found this fascinating. It's such a great idea. If you see, see how you can't get it off because that's stuck in there? So these clips, once they're in, they don't slide off very easily. So we got to help them. And that's, that's good for um, assembly. So we just have to lift a little and you know, loosen them up first. The weather's getting just a little bit cooler, less humidity down here. And Naples, Florida. The uh, camera's not overheating like it used to. We're still looking for a better camera solution so we can get some better shots, maybe even get two cameras, but it'd be hard for one guy to use two cameras. Be running around a lot. Hmm, what else do you see? I guess our throttle cable. Um, hmm. You know I'm using a metal screwdriver here. I think we have enough work to do under here. We're not going to worry too much about a little mark here and there, which it'll be okay. I remember in the beginning I said we're going to be real careful, but we are careful, but using metal, not always a good idea. Here's another rubber plug. I don't know what this would be for. Um... Or something else, uh, maybe if it was an automatic transmission car, this would be where the another cable went down to the transmission for the detent cable. This use of, if this was, if this did have an automatic, of course it wouldn't be a turbo, but uh, it used the Volkswagen transaxle in the rear. A lot of people already know that, but uh, that could have been what that was for if it was an automatic, or possibly cruise control. Now cruise control would have been. Uh, one cable directly from the cruise control unit over to the throttle uh, throttle cable would come all around. And I believe the transmission cable comes from the other side of the throttle. So that's still a mystery. Maybe one of you guys know you have a car that there's something stuck in there. I'd sure like to know about it. Okay, moving on. Um, little rubber buffers. Cracked and split and rotted. Uh, what else? What else? Again, the steering suspension and all that, the steering column, that'll come out um, when we finally have the framework under the car. I don't see anything else here. Let's take a look. Strip 
Oh yeah, here we go. rattle for the hoses come up I'm sure I'm boring you guys but we're gonna get to some good stuff when we're inside the car also um, later on I will show you what we're doing in the shop some more stuff here and some flood cars we're working on that's interesting we have a, a 1969 Mercedes 280 SE that got flooded up to the speedometer. I'll show you a look at that. That's a, that's a mess. Okay, here's the antenna connector we were talking about. This is where the windshield, when you buy the windshield, has a little connector. That's just a pass-through where it goes into the, into the car. I should be able to pop that up. Yeah, there we go. Not too much trouble. Um, and that's that's the rest of it where it goes through the firewall so that connector can come out a little bit of a wiggle and there's a ring come on exactly where I wanted that to be yep just a little grommet and there's a little ring of pressure for pressure fit Okay, so that goes with the windshield. Got these little plastic, plastic nuts. We've gotten extremely busy with regular customer work. It's taken away from our fun projects. It's not fair. If you want to come over here and see this horrible butcher job to try to save this battery box, it's, I can't really peel all this off. It's really bad. Oh, we have a ground cable. Let me get out of your way and have a look at this little disaster. Well, oh, well, we have a little, looks like a little hose. Uh, I actually have new ones of these clamps. They're all over the car in all different sizes. I can only get this size. Um, I'm still looking for the larger sizes. But that's all I can get for now. If you know anything, if you've seen these around, let me know. I know Ferrari uses them as well. Okay, that's gonna do it for here. Uh, maybe we'll... Maybe uh, we'll... Start on the doors. We got the seatbelt. Seatbelt on that side. That door. Accelerator pedal if it wants to come off the floor. Yeah. So we'll see you on the inside. All right. Well, thanks for joining me inside. Uh, now we're on the left side of the car. Obviously, um, I did notice that uh, we have an emergency brake cable still here. The park brake cable is pretty rusty. I sprayed it. So I'm going to give that a shot first. If I can't get that right away, if it's going to be rusted on there, uh, we'll just move on and let that soak in a little bit. Hopefully it'll work. Um, that does not look good. So let's see what happens there. Um, yeah, we'll take the spring off. <clears throat> it's just got a little 10 millimeter jam nut. Um, And I'm going to need vice grips to clamp that, so let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's some rusty stuff. So this nut is a, a little barrel inside, and it's captured within this little um, the pull, pull mechanism. The cable does have to go that way, so this has to come off whether I have to cut it or if we can save it. We'll see. So we'll do this the right way. No, it should go this way. Remember pliers, channel lock pliers. Our compressor. 
Um, channel lock pliers, uh, what they call water pump pliers or channel lock pliers, have they grip in one direction. So it's always better to use them where the jaw is this way, you would pull this way. The, the teeth are actually faced a certain way. Same with vice grips. And look at this, this is actually coming off. Uh, much to my surprise. This is going to be a while, so if you want to go get a beer or something, or maybe a coffee, or hang out. You could flip over to Rebuild Rescue and watch one of their videos for a little bit. That guy rebuilds a lot of stuff. A lot of fun to watch if you ever wanted to take a look. But come back. You gotta come back. You can't go. You can't just leave me in the middle of this. This is another item that doesn't usually fail. The only time I had to change one of these cables was a long time ago when a car caught on fire uh, underneath the car and it burned the cable. The car was still in warranty, so we had to replace everything. Anything that had a mark on it from the fire had to get replaced. Now, if this car was buried in salt water, we'd probably have to get the torches to cut this. Almost. Should be done with your first cup of coffee by now. Or beer, whatever you prefer. Still kind of early. Almost. Yeah, all these flood cars down here were in salt water. Um, some of them got blown right off of the lifts in their own garages. We have a lot of car collectors down here. The water took the cars right off the lift and pushed them right out of the garage door onto the onto the ground in the front of the house. It's just unbelievable the damage. Okay. Oh, don't tell me that nut's got to come off. Oh, it does have to come off. Beautiful. Mr. Spring. All right, spring nut. And then this little captured uh, barrel nut will stay in there. And then we can unbolt the handle and take the handle out. This. Oh no, it will go the other way. I think the cable will be coming this way. <laughs> we'll check that out later. Okay. Ouch. Get the handle out of the way. All right, pretty simple mechanism. This here is where the park brake warning light switch goes. Um, it's adjustable. It takes so little pressure that they don't have to really use two bolts. You can just tighten this here and the friction will keep it in place. So that's pretty good. That's in pretty good shape. There's the hook for the cable. We'll probably replate that. What else we get down there? No money? Ah, drugs. I don't know what that was. Spare parts. Ha! Ah. Yes. I think that's a dime. Okay, let's move on to the doors. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, we have a door check, door check strap. Um, the steering wheel. We're going to need that back, you know. Uh, door check switch, door strap, and the harness. We also have a couple clips on the inside. 
I think we already pulled this channel out on the inside over here. The right door still has it, but we'll take the felts out as well. And then the, the rubber here for the window glass and then the, the moldings on the outside. Uh, those are a little tricky to get off, but you'll see uh, overall they're not too bad. All right, door check first. Uh, looks like a five millimeter. These are simple little switches. This one should have two connectors. A little point, so every time it goes in, it sort of self cleans its uh, the self cleans itself, <laughs> self cleans the contact when it closes um, because of the shape of it. Now there's two terminals, and they're not connected together. One of them is for the door doinger, we call it the buzzer, the warning, the bell, the ringer, you, whatever you want to call it. The other one is for the interior lights. So when this is in the off state with the door uh, closed, this pushed in, there's no connection between the two, so there's no feedback of any kind. Um, the right switch usually only has one terminal. In a pinch, you can use this switch on the right side, doesn't matter. But that's why they are insulated from each other. And we'll get a new booty. Even a part number on it. Okay. Now let me try the door check. Mm. Try with an extension. Okay. There's our door check pin. These are 12 point, very small, and they're very shallow. So I'm just going to give them a little tap just to make sure they're seated all the way so they don't strip out. Give them a good. Oh, Not even tight. They have Loctite on them too. It's probably micro encapsulated seal, uh, thread locker sealer. Do I need to bang it in? Yeah. It really doesn't want to go all the way in. All right. Little gasket on there. We'll replace that. I keep saying we're going to replace all these things. I can't imagine what the bill's going to be if we do have to replace everything. These should be ten. No, no, those are also five. All right. And there's our little door check. These wear out over time. You find that the door just doesn't want to stay open. So we should be able to get new ones. All sloppy and loose. Plus we get that nice new plating on there. All right, so there's a left side door check. Keep that in check. Now the door harness, which way? Is this going to go? Will those fit through? I think they will. Well, it's short. Let's try this way first. I really don't know which way it goes, so let's see. If I pull it this way, can I get those connectors through the hole? One side at a time. Yeah, look at that. I would have lost that bet.
Nice, still in good shape. Now, will it come through and go down? A little shoot here. Let's see. It does get a little congested down here with the um, the window guide, but I think I can get past it. Yeah, not too bad. So, yeah, it'll work. I know that looks like the cruise control connector, but that is for the door lock servo. And these door lock servos also have switches in them to tell the door lock ECU uh, what position they're in, up or down. That's why it has five, five uh, wires instead of just two. Feedback. All right, left door harness in the bucket. Oh, another. These. We got some vinyl. This switch. This switch was a real pain. I'm going to try to get that out too. I was going to try to do this off camera so you didn't have to witness this horrifying experience. The switch should come out of the center, but it's not happening. Oh, that's why it wouldn't come out. It's got rusty. Now, not that it's got to rust to the plastic, but it creates such high friction that it doesn't want to move. Um, so, we'll be getting a new switch and we'll make all this nice and work again. Okay. What's next? What's next? We got some little clips inside the door. wiring harness. Why that particular shape? I don't know. I'm sure they had their reasons. Insulation, I'm not going to bore you with that. I do want to remove the window channel felts. This one. And I think we already took this one out. I don't know what we did with it, but it's here somewhere. So those. Um, this big window seal is pretty well damaged. These will definitely need to be replaced. All right. That's how they come out, but this one's a little more stubborn because it's so brittle. It's just tearing and breaking. So. We'll be looking for new window seals, door frame seals, as well as door seals. All right, well, if you want to come back over here, we're going to remove this upper molding. You may have seen me already remove this one. Um, I don't know if you saw that or not. But anyways, this little, hands are real dirty. This little black strip, little aluminum strip, comes off. There's a little tab that's part of the strip, a little aluminum piece that goes through a slot, and then it's just bent over. Um, that's what they rely on to keep it from coming out. So I need to locate that, which is hard to do with the sun in my eyes. Try this side. It's bent around a, uh, a little slot in here. So 
So it's kind of hard to see. I'm trying not to distort these, but because once they kink, you're not going to be able to save it. You'll always see that kink. There's that one. It'll have to be tweaked a little bit, but at least it's not kinked. Uh, we can get it straight, test fit it, make sure we get the angle right, and then we can spray paint these black again before we clip them back on. You know, some nice edge primer and we'll make them real nice. So we can save those. Let's see, there's some clips in here for the felt strip. just pop out that way. These are just simple little clips. Those hold the uh, window felt on the outside. That, that edge that goes down here. If you do take a door apart, make sure the wiring harness goes back into the clips because with all that movement in there, uh, with the window and the regulator arms, you want to be real careful. So there's more clips. There. I'll take these back if you're done viewing them. All right. That's it for the door. Um, I'm going to figure out the gas pedal. I think it's just held down with two bolts in the floor. Um, and we'll get set up to do that. All right, we're back inside. Um, they're 11, the, the hex head is 11 millimeter, not 10. So let's see. Oh boy. Come out. Hey. Thank you. Uh, stop the little circuit breaker in there. Hey, get out of there. power of plastic. Look at that. All it does is pivot on a on the plastic hinge. Amazing that doesn't last that that it does last that long. Craziness. Okay. Uh, all right, let's um what was the next thing I'm going to do? Well, we still have to pull the seat belts out. The expansion tank, we have a check valve back there. We still got to take the sunroof drive out. Uh, and miscellaneous things in the back. So I think we're going to wait till next time. We've got sunroof drains. Not a big deal. Um, you saw this door. I don't know if you want to see the other door. Um, we'll get to that next time. Um, if you do want to see the other door come apart, just put it in the comments. We'll take it apart on camera next time or we'll just get it apart beforehand. Whatever, whatever works. Um, so I guess that's going to be it for this time. I wanted to give you a shop tour, show you some uh, flood cars, but uh, we can do that next week. They're going to be here a long time. I can promise you that. Um, everybody, uh, thanks for watching. We're up to, I think, 597 subscribers. That's fantastic. Uh, very excited to get this over the hump. Um, and that's about it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button thing, I think you're supposed to do, so you get notifications. All that good stuff. So uh, let's keep this thing rolling, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching.